Hi, welcome back to my channel. This is Rhea, your study buddy for hematology. But today, I'm going to be your study buddy for immunology instead. So somebody requested in one of my videos if I can do the classical pathway of complement. And I truly enjoyed complement and learning about it when I was taking immunology in undergrad. And so this video is for that comment. And if you guys have any other, you know, topics that we could do memorization techniques on please leave a comment down below and i'll try my best to do that but having said that it is not easy to do this because um it's been a while since i did immunology and so i had to go back and refresh my memory on it so this is how i would go over the classical pathway if i had an exam tomorrow and yeah i hope this helps you so let's start so complement is one of your defense mechanisms against foreign you know, entities like bacteria and viruses. Complement is a series of soluble proteins that interact with each other and ultimately kills and lyses these bacteria or viruses in your body or anything that's foreign. Anything that could trigger an antibody antigen complex. So for the classical pathway of complement, it starts with an antibody antigen complex so an antibody is produced by your body while the antigen is you know any surface proteins on bacteria or a virus that's unique to them and when an antibody from your body recognizes that antigen and they form a bond that is the beginning of the classical pathway of complement so if you're watching this, you probably already know what antibodies and antigens are, but for the sake of reviewing, antigens are macromolecules that are able to elicit the formation of antibodies in your body. Meanwhile, antibodies are formed by your body in response to foreign antigens, you know. So if you're exposed to, let's say, you know, varicella virus, you form antibodies against it and that's why you're you have an immune response to it when you're exposed to again to this virus sometime in the future. That's the simplest way of describing an antibody-antigen relationship. So when your body sees that there's an antibody-antigen complex forming, um, this attracts the first step of complement, which is the recognition unit. The recognition unit is composed of the C1R, C1Q and C1S and they are proteins that um, start bonding with each other the moment they notice that there's a antibody antigen relationship going on so if they're like oh they're passing through our blood and all that and then they say oh shoot there's an antibody antigen thing going on over there I'm gonna go there so the first thing that happens is C1Q recognizes the FC um, part of the antibody which is the fragment crystallizable region of the antibody that it's attached to an antigen so it's like so there's that antibody this is the antigen so it's attaching to it this part here will be recognized by the c1q protein and that's when it starts to bind into that complex this is the beginning of complement the classical pathway of complement so c1q attaches to that crystallizable um, region and so it has to be within two adjacent antibodies with the crystallizable unit within range so it has to be like like there's two antibodies in there and then the c1q starts to attach into their tips and then the c1q rs unit starts to form and it's gonna look like a bouquet so the recognition unit for me it's easy to memorize because it looks like a bouquet recognition unit recognition so like if you recognize your feelings for someone you usually give them a bouquet of flowers and that's how i see the recognition unit so this is the beginning we're giving you flowers <laughs> we're giving you the c1q i'm giving you the c1qrs flowers but for the c1qrs to be stable it has to attach to two antibody antigen complexes at the same time so that's our first unit it's the c1qrs so the c1qrs forms and then after that it cleaves the c4 and the c2 proteins all of these guys are just floating around our bodies so after it cleaves c4 it cleaves it into c4a and c4b 
C4B goes on to form the activation unit and for the next protein which is C2 it also gets cleaved into C2A and C2B and for the next stage we only need C2A so the next unit is the C4B2A complex or otherwise known as the C3 convertase so important to note about these complement proteins is that their numbering are not really the same as the order at which they function in other words the numbers don't really coincide with when they are needed in this whole sequence like for example we start with c1 qrs but then the next thing that happens is c4 passes around and it gets cleaved and then c2 passes around and it gets cleaved so it doesn't make sense right you jump from c1 to c4 then c2 the reason why the numberings don't make sense is because these proteins were discovered according to the order of their numbers but their function wasn't discovered till much later on the the research so that's why so ignore the numbering for now and it'll make sense again at the end but at the beginning it's weird because we're, we're gonna start with c1 qrs and then we're gonna jump to c4 and it's gonna get cleaved to c4a and c4b c4b moves on to be a part of the c3 convertase while with c2 when it gets cleaved into c2a and c2b c2a goes forward and becomes a part of the C4B2A or the C3 convertase, which is our next unit, which is the activation unit. So why is it called C3 convertase? Because this unit cleaves C3 into C3A and C3B. And in this step, C3B attaches into that C4B C2, C4B2A complex and becomes C4B2A3B. So the C4B2A3B complex is known as the C5 convertase. So why is it called the C5 convertase? Because it converts C5 into C5A and C5B. And then this is going to be the beginning of your membrane attack complex. So C5B actually attaches into the membrane of the foreign entity at which the antigen antibody complex is attached to. So if this was like a virus or a bacteria, C5B is the first protein to like really attach itself into the membrane. Okay, on top of the membrane of the foreign organism. And then as C5B attaches, it'll attract C6 and C7 and then C8. On C8, on that step, C8 will start to dig through that membrane, which is really important. This is all important for, for complement to work. So when C8 attaches into the membrane, it needs C9 to create a pore that would go through that membrane and break it apart. It will actually make a pore on that bacteria's surface. This is the, I, I think this is the coolest thing. Uh, <laughs> I think this is the coolest thing about complement is when it, you know, it does the lysis part, the membrane attack complex. And it's so easy to memorize at this point because now the numberings make sense. It's going to be from C, C5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And I repeat that um, one step could not move forward unless these all of these complement proteins are available and really readily um, around the environment at which this complex is happening they all have to be within range and be attaching all at the same time now does one pore kill a bacteria no but there's the reason that complement is very effective is because at every step there is a signal amplification that happens. So between the recognition unit, you know, when it first attaches into that antibody antigen complex, there are 30 molecules of C4 being split per one C1QRS unit. 
okay so that's the first amplification and then when it moves forward and does the c3 convertase which is the activation unit it splits 200 molecules of c3 per c4b2a that is made so in each step complement is amplified so yeah that's pretty quick but let's do a review i'm going to do a infographic so that it's easier to see how um complement the classical pathway of complement goes okay so here we have our infographic for the classical pathway of complement so this is where we start. We start with the bacteria or virus. So I just want to make it clear that none of these images are to scale. <laughs> these are just, you know, graphics that I made so that it's easier for us to understand what's going on. So the bacteria virus has antigen on its surface, which um, our antibodies attach to. So that complement starts. And uh, the first thing that happens is the recognition unit starts to form. The C1QRS, our bouquet of flowers. I repeat, <laughs> it's the bouquet of flowers, the C1QRS. And the next unit is the activation unit, which is a C3 convertase that converts the C3 into C3A and C3B. This is the most important part because at this step, because it splits 200 molecules of C3 per one activation unit. So this is where it's really amplified and ramped up. And then we have our step three, which is a C5 convertase up here where C5 is split into C5A and C5B. Only C5B proceeds into initiating the membrane attack complex, which is comprised of the C6, 7, 8, and 9, and ultimately piercing through the surface and making a pore. And that's that. That's how we summarize the classical pathway of complement. And all you really need to remember are these four steps. Okay, so number one, C1QRS recognition unit number two is a 4b 2a activation unit which is also known as the c3 convertase and then third step is the c4b 2a 3b which is the c5 convertase and then lastly we have the membrane attack complex and always remember that there is signal amplification in every step which makes this pathway of complement highly effective so um this was this was a challenge to memorize and like understand again but i really love this part of immunology and i think that our bodies are so cool to be able to do these kinds of things and we don't even know like you know it just does it it's it's amazing what the body can do so thank you for watching today's video and I wanted to say that there is hematology content coming up. This is just like a bonus content for me and I'm still working on my heme stuff. The next uh, videos will be about aplastic anemias. So watch out for those. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do like and subscribe. Thank you for your time today and see you on the next videos. Bye!